Hi everyone, my name is Shannon Mahoney and I am the Manager of University Partnerships with Dalton Education, a Serify company. And I wanna thank you for taking the time to review this video today. And in the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna be sharing with you about the basics of the CFP exam, Dalton Education's four secrets to passing the exam, and most importantly, the importance of enrolling in a review as you prepare for the exam. But with that being said, I think it's important to note that this presentation is usually given to students. And so there will be a good bit of information that you probably already know. However, um, I want to point out that as a part of my role with Dalton Education, I travel to universities all over the country speaking with students about these topics and these issues and answering questions and really debunking some of the myths of the CFP exam, especially undergraduate students tend to be a little bit nervous about it. And so I would love the opportunity to visit your capstone class or maybe your retirement class, those classes that are towards the end of the education program. And so I hope you learned something new today, but if you don't, I hope that you might see this as a value um, to your students. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, the things that I will be going through today um, are just the <coughs> CFP certification requirements, the basics of the exam, the four secrets to passing the exam, and then finally we'll talk a little bit about the Dalton Review. So, but to jump in, you know, why even CFP in the first place? And I know that, especially if you're teaching undergraduate students, uh, you know, you might have students sitting in your classroom thinking, am I even going to sit for the CFP exam? I can call myself a financial planner and not have my CFP designation. And so I, we believe that it's really important uh, for students to see the value of having those three letters next to their name. So kind of a exciting statistic, not kind of, but it is an exciting statistic that a CFP professionals, they earn 26% more than their non-CFP counterpart peers. And that's about one to $2 million over the course of their career. Uh, the industry is growing. It's actually set to double in the next 10 years, as many of you already know. And you know, distinguishing yourself within the market of financial planning in the future is going to be very important. And lastly, it's gonna give you that instant credibility that you need as you're sitting across the table from a client. So see the CFP certification requirements. The CFP board breaks it down super simple into what they call the four E's. And so these are the boxes that your students need to check in order to be able to put those three letters next to their name. So first, they need to fulfill the education requirement. They need to pass the exam. There's the ethics component. So they'll sign that code of conduct and they'll run a background check on them. And then there is the experience requirement, which um, that's where I get most of my questions. In short, it is a three year experience requirement. So 40 hours a week for three years totals 6,000 hours. Um, if they sit directly underneath the CFP, they can get it done in two years. So 4,000 hours. However, uh, it can be somewhere in between that 4,000 and 6,000. So say you know, their internship was not underneath a CFP and then their experience, their actual job is, um, or it just varies across the table. They can use their internship hours towards this experience requirement. There are a lot of uh, things that they can be involved in in the industry while in school that count towards this. But so um, if you go to CFP.net, there's a lot of information on what counts how to get it registered and all of that. Okay, let's talk about the basics of the exam. And you guys all, all of you already know this. So you can sit for the exam three times a year in March, July, and November. Uh, the cost of the exam is $825 if you register early and then $925 or $1025 if you register late. Uh, it is a computer-based test that will be taken at a pro metric center. And uh, there are adjustments that have been made for COVID-19 at those pro metric centers and with the CFP board. So if you live far enough away within a certain radius that maybe you're gonna have to stay at a hotel in order to get to a testing center, uh, they are making accommodations for people to test at home 
or if that student is at high risk of getting COVID-19. So these are things that they'll need to talk to the CFP board about. Um, there, I don't know that there's a black and white answer to this, but they will work with them on that. It's a one day, six hour test. So two, three hour sessions with a 40 minute break in between. And during COVID-19, they have added two additional breaks at the halfway point. Um, of each of those three hour sessions. So at each hour and a half juncture, there will be a break. And so it's two shorter 15 minute breaks in the middle of three hour sessions. It's 170 multiple choice questions, which is simple enough, right? But something that students tend to get a little bit nervous about are the case studies. And um, I always share with students that uh, if you're prepared for the exam, you're gonna be prepared for the case study. So what it looks like, it's six to eight pages of information. And many of you have probably helped <laughs> write some of these case studies. There will definitely be one on the exam, possibly two. So those six to eight pages of information followed by 10 to 20 multiple choice questions. I always share this tip with students. When these case studies are being written, there's about 70 to 90 questions associated with each case study. So that tells them that about two thirds of this information um, in the case study, totally unnecessary to answering those 10 to 20 questions, right? So it's important for them to know that if they click through to the end of the case study when it's popped up full screen in front of them, that it will then go dual screen so that the students can read the questions and then find the answers and the information. So these are things that they're gonna learn in the Dalton review, but I kind of, I like to start telling them these little tips and tricks to taking the exam to kind of calm their nerves and you know help them realize they're gonna be just fine. Uh, so there are gonna be some mini cases or item sets on the exam. They'll tackle these the exact same way. Uh, you know, read the questions, find the answers and the information. And you know, in short, I always just say don't let they don't let the case studies trip you up because, like I said, if you're prepared for this exam, you're gonna be prepared for the case studies. All right, let's talk about the four secrets to passing the CFP exam. So, uh, the first question that I always ask is, okay, what do you think the number one reason is that students do not? pass the exam on the first try or just in general and someone always will kind of mild timidly raise their hand and say oh they didn't study enough and yes that's the answer the number one reason that people don't pass is that they didn't study enough and that just tells us that they had poor time management you're going to study 225 to 250 hours for this exam and so you've got to have good time management you can't just study when you feel like it you're going to need to make a schedule write it down and tell somebody about it. Um, you know, what does 225 to 250 hours look like? Uh, you're gonna study over about a three month period for the exam. That's how long the Dalton Review runs, but that's pretty typical across the board, how, how long people will study. It might look like studying two hours a day, Monday through Friday, and then six hours a day on Saturday, Sunday. You get to pick though, I always say, it's important to take care of yourself during the time that you're studying. So yes, every single day of the week has a, I just said that you'll be studying, but you know, pick a couple of Saturdays or pick a couple of days during those three months that you're gonna go and do something fun. Take care of yourself, exercise, eat right, get enough sleep. That stuff is so important as you are working through that schedule and put the schedule on the calendar so that when you know it's Taco Tuesday and their friends are saying, hey, we're all going out for dinner, they can say, you know what, I can't go to, until seven because I study from five to seven on, on Tuesday nights. And then finally, I always encourage students to tell their friends and family that they're about to go through a short season of time where they're just gonna be studying a little bit more and they're gonna be a little bit more unavailable. And it's so important for students to stay in touch with especially their capstone course and the students that they're gonna graduate with. Um, 
out of their program at the same time, I always tell them, get it on an email chain, get in a group me, which is a messaging app, you know, and stay in touch and check in on each other and ask each other how it's going and study together. You know, we're all Zoom pros now. And, um, you know, this is just going to help them um, as they're, you know, feeling a little bit nervous. And I always say, you know, the more people you tell that you're taking the exam, the more people you're going to have to tell that you didn't pass it. So tell everybody and hold yourself accountable. All right, secret number two is that you have to focus on your strengths and weaknesses. And this is so obvious, right? But it is so important. There is a great quote from Muhammad Ali where he says that he didn't start counting his crunches until they started to hurt. And while I personally think he's crazy, uh, he makes a great point because when people asked him why, he said that he knew uh, that he knew that he was starting to mold and shape and grow into the boxer that he needed to be in order to be the greatest of all time when his crunches started to hurt. It's not when he was, you know, in the very beginning, it's, you know, working on the easy things that he was growing and shaping. And so it's the same way for students as they are studying for the CFP exam. Uh, you've got to focus on the things that hurt a little bit more. Um, you've got to focus on those things more than your strengths, right? It doesn't mean that you don't need to focus on your strengths. It just means that you need to focus on your weaknesses more. Now, the Dalton Review is gonna put students through two different diagnostic quizzes that break down the strengths and weaknesses by subcontent area so that they know what those things are. But I always use the example of, you know, you've got your flashcards, let's say it's Tuesday night, and you're working through your flashcards, you have a larger stack of things that you know, a smaller stack of things that you don't know as well. And it's really tempting to shuffle those up and start back over the next day uh, because everybody likes to study the things that they know well, right? But you've got to keep those two piles separate and go through the smaller pile more than you go through the larger pile. Because at the end of the day, um, it's those weaknesses that are going to set you apart from the people that pass on the first try and the people that don't. Because you know, at the end of the day, um, it's going to be you in a quiet room in front of a computer, and you've got to respect the difficulty of this content in order to pass it on the first try, because nobody can magically tell you what's going to be on the exam. All right, secret number three is to take the exam ASAP. And, you know, I know that all of you are recommending to your students that they take the exam right out of their education. Um, there is an old way of thinking that says, go and get some experience, then take the exam. But, you know, the, the thought on that has changed pretty overwhelmingly. And the CFP board actually offers a $200 discount to students on their exam fee if they take the exam within their first two exam cycles out of, educate, out of their education. So for those students graduating in the spring, that would mean that they're sitting in either July or November. And they do this because, A, the statistic is that, stu that students that take it out of their education, uh, it, they have a higher pass rate. Um, also, you're never going to be closer to this content than, you, than they are right now. Uh, and so they're learning the bias of the CFP board. They're in study mode. If they put it off, it's going to be easy to keep putting it off. So recommend to your students to take the exam ASAP. And secret number four is to not be like this guy. <laughs> I think he's adorable, but really the point I'm trying to make is this, this, what we don't want students to look like while they're studying and they need a review. I always say to imagine you graduate college and you start studying for the review or starting for the exam immediately. So you pile up all your CFP textbooks and three months before the exam, you peel open your fundamentals book that you haven't seen in two years and you say, ready, go. I mean, it's an overwhelming thought, right? There's too much information in the textbooks that won't be on the exam they're not written in a way to be remembered in three months. And so it's so important for students to get into a review, which is gonna narrow down the content of their CFP education into about 90 to 95% of what will be on the exam. It's gonna be written in a way that they can actually download into their brain in three months. Um, they'll have some workbook sized versions of their textbooks that will have study tips that correspond with flashcards, 
there's diagnostic quizzes, there's um, office hours with our instructors, there will be a live in-person review, a test bank, all kinds of things. Um, and I always say to students, you know, there's a crazy statistic out there that says, uh, that, that tells us that the bar exam actually has a higher pass rate than the CFP exam. And I don't necessarily think it means that it's easier than the CFP exam, but what it does tell us is that when a law student walks into the bar exam, I mean, it's do or die. If they wanna practice law, they have to pass the bar. And that's not the case for financial planning students. They can still call themselves a financial planner without their CFP marks. But I always just say to students, if you're gonna do it, take it seriously like a law student takes the bar exam and get into a review. I mean, there are, you can't find a law student that didn't get into a bar review. So they absolutely need to get into a review. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about what sets the Dalton, uh, the Dalton review apart from the other reviews out there. But I always say this to students at the beginning of my presentation is that I'm gonna tell you about the Dalton review. Um, and obviously I work for Dalton Education, so I'm gonna tell you it's the best review out there obviously, right? But I want to tell you what students are saying sets the Dalton Review apart from the other options and why they chose the Dalton Review, because that's what's important to students as they're shopping for a review. I want them to be educated as they go in and they're picking the best review for them. So, uh, but before we jump in, let me brag on us just a tiny bit. Um, there are over 40,000 CFP professionals in the United States that through Dalton's education, textbooks, and review, that we have helped them gain their CFP marks. So we've been doing this for a really long time, and we have figured out the best way to study for this exam. And we call that your pathway to success or the pathway to success, if you will. So this is, uh, this is what a review, three month review will look like. It's kind of broken down from beginning to end. We tell students that it's incredibly important to follow the roadmap. Uh, don't, you know, don't start at the end and start you know, drilling the test bank before you've taken the review readiness quiz or spent time in the pre-study booklets. And so you'll see that the first thing they do is they take a, a diagnostic quiz called the review readiness quiz, breaks down their strengths and weaknesses, there's pre-study lectures, they'll spend 100 to 125 hours in those narrowed down workbook size versions of their textbooks, we have office hours uh, with our instructors, and then there is the live review lectures. So that's it, that is either in person or online. Uh, for the March exam, all of our review lectures will be online. There are three different options. One is a Wednesday to Saturday. The other is over two consecutive weekends. And then there is one that's over a 10 week period every Saturday. Um, all of those live review lectures are mobile compatible, can be downloaded and listened to over and over and over again So uh, to study. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility with these review lectures. Students can enroll in one, two, or three, they can, um, and they can listen back to all of them. Uh, there is a test bank, which will be one of the last things that they really spend a lot of time in. There's over 2,000 questions. Uh, they'll be, it'll mark their missed questions. There will be a confidence gauge on each question so that they can go back and take a customized test on their missed questions and low confidence and high confidence and really hone in on those strengths and weaknesses. They will take another diagnostic quiz three weeks before the exam that will give them their strengths and weaknesses, but also spit out a predicted probability of them passing the CFP exam. And this will come into play a little later, but this is gonna help them really know, are they ready to take the exam? And lastly, uh, there's a post-review Q&A, but there is a simulated exam. It's a full out six hour, two, three hour sessions, 40 minute break in between, exam. And I always say, I know it sounds like a thrilling thing to do on a Saturday, but it's very important uh, for them to really work out the kinks of what it feels like to actually take a six-hour exam. Most of them have never done that before. So in total, it says here 237 to 267 hours of studying. I like a round number, so I say 225 to 250, but pick your poison. Okay, 
This is my favorite slide. This is what students are saying sets us apart from the other reviews on the market. Number one, flexibility. The ability to attend both the virtual and traditional classroom reviews. Uh, the fact that you can attend one, two, or three. If your schedule changes, they're recorded. There's a lot of flexibility. And we're invested in their success. And this is so true. And I think if you talk, I don't think, I know that if you talk to anybody who's been through the Dalton Review, they'll tell you that our success is their success and that we're willing to work with students and do really whatever we can in order to help them be successful. That's our passion at Dalton Education. So next, uh, the content and instructors are fantastic. All of our instructors are past item writers. They afford the exam. They all hold their CFP uh, marks because who wants to learn how to study for the CFP exam from someone that didn't actually take the CFP exam and pass it. Um, and all of our content is developed by former members of the CFP Board of Examiners. So people that know the industry and they know their stuff. Uh, we're constantly updating with hot topic questions. We have a great relationship with the CFP board. So when changes are coming down the pipeline, uh, we, know, we know that there's changes coming down the pipeline uh, before, they're, before they're public. Uh, so uh, la next is our test bank, our benchmark assessment exams, and our simulated exam the ability to focus on your strengths and weaknesses and to really hone in on those things. Uh, and lastly is our guarantee to pass promise. We are the only review provider on the market that has a guarantee to pass promise. Uh, we have two different uh, reviews. One is the guarantee to pass review. The other is the Dalton review. With the guarantee to pass review, there is a 100% money back guarantee, which I'll tell you more about in a second. Um, but with both reviews, um, there are free repeats. We're here with them until they pass. And so they can sit through the review as many times as they need to before they take the exam, and they can continue to sit through it until they pass. Our hope is that they'll pass in the first try. But if life happens and they don't pass on the first try, we are with them until they pass. All right, these are Dalton Review's pass. These are the Dalton Review's pass rates. and. You know, if you go onto any review provider's website, they're gonna have pretty good pass rates because if they didn't, they wouldn't be on the market, right? But they tell a story. And so I wanna share with them, I wanna share, I want to share them with you. <laughs> um, so for students that score a 70% or higher on the exam readiness quiz, and that is the diagnostic quiz that's taken three weeks before the exam, for students that score 70% or higher on that, there is a 99% pass rate. Uh, for the students that score 60% or higher on that exam readiness quiz, there is an 88% pass rate. And our overall student pass rate for each cohort is 75%. Uh, the CFP board overall pass rate hovers around 60%, so we're higher than that. Over half of our students do score over a 60% on the exam readiness quiz. But what that tells you is that there's about 25% of students that don't score a 60% on that exam readiness quiz and they still pass the exam. So our instructors are here to help them decide, are they ready to take the exam or do they need to sit through the review again? Um, and that 25% that does not pass the exam, here's what I'll tell you. If we went in and looked at their progression through the material, did they show up, did they do the work? Nine times out of 10, the answer is that they did not do the work. And so I always say, if you do the work, this is most likely going to work for you. I am not a magician, I can't tell you it definitely will, but if you do the work, this will most likely work for you. So it's important to take it seriously, get into a review, take the exam right out of your education, focus on your strengths and weaknesses, and have good time management. It's so, so important. So um, something that I'll point out before I move to the next slide is that in the Guarantee to Pass review, which I will give you a little bit more information about here in a second, but uh, if you score a 70% or higher on that exam readiness quiz and you don't pass, we will give you all of your money back. But here's the thing. 
a student doesn't need to get into the guarantee to pass review for the money back guarantee. Our hope is that they'll pass on the first try, but the guarantee to pass review is going to give them a bunch of additional resources. So if they have the time and the resources to invest into the guarantee to pass review, it's definitely worth it. However, if they don't have the time and the resources to do that, we highly recommend that the Dalton Review is a fantastic product. So how much will your students invest? It's $12.95 for the Dalton Review and it's $20.95 for the Guarantee to Pass Review package. Um, all universities that I speak to their students with get a $100 discount for all of their students, students off the Dalton Review. So that's $11.95 or $19.95. Uh, at all of these presentations, I do raffle off $500 off of the review, so some students will get that. And as you know, many students' employers will reimburse or pay for their review as well, and their exam fees, depending. So, um, like I said, my name is Shannon Mahoney, and I'm the manager of University Partnerships with Dalton Education. Um, if you have any questions about, you know, what it's like for a student to call Dalton Education and, you know, enroll in the review, give us a call at this 877 number. We would love to talk to you and um, just kind of tell you how it works. So hope you have a great day. Thanks a lot.